Hi everyone! If you're new to the channel, my name is Jamie, I'm an English teacher and artist, and I spend a lot of time overthinking. If you've been here before, welcome back! Today, I want to talk about kawaii culture, kawaii art, and the implications of cuteness in your art aesthetic. Last weekend, I visited Durham, North Carolina and explored the Sarah P. Duke Gardens. Slightly inspired by the gardens, I digitally painted a log with some mushrooms in the last hurrah of autumn. Now that October is over, I feel like there's this massive rush for winter, but I'm still enjoying the fall leaves. So I decided to give my log and mushrooms cute smiles to play with the warmth of fall and friendship. When I paint inanimate objects or still lifes, I don't often give them faces. Why the fuck you lying? Why you always lying? Ooh, oh my god, stop fucking lying! But this time I was inspired by Catherine Kay, who runs Catnip on Etsy and YouTube. Catherine describes catnip as a kawaii art shop, and I would describe my art piece as an attempt of combining my semi-realistic painting style with kawaii face shapes to see if semi-realism would make the faces uncanny. But then I started worrying that adapting the kawaii art style was cultural appropriation. Also, what's at stake with Western artists adopting an art style characteristic of Japanese marketing, art, and culture? That is a difficult question, obviously, and it's definitely up for debate. So, kawaii is often roughly translated to cute, but there is nuance in the term that often goes unrecognized in Western culture. Ito Ujitaka, a professor at Meiji University, describes kawaii as something that an object can possess, but it also imbues others with a feeling of kawaii. An innocent, large-eyed character with a friendly and infant-like appearance can be kawaii, but kawaii can also define the feeling that the viewer experiences. It's a connection of sorts, from what I understand. But seriously, if any of you have a closer cultural connection to Japan and can chime in on the nuance of the term, I would love to talk about language and what kawaii means in the comments. Professor Ujitaka also argues that kawaii aesthetics showcase the positive view that Japanese people have towards imperfection. Quote, bowls which are considered too beautiful may be deliberately cracked and then repaired. The Japanese appreciate objects which are distorted and could be grotesque, unlike perfect things. This is a sense of kawaii, which is in conformity with traditional Japanese aesthetics." End quote. I'd love to hear your thoughts on this in the comments. Should white people use the term kawaii? If it's being used to characterize certain aspects and values in contemporary art, it's a very helpful search term. But at the same time, that nuance of the term may be lost through its appropriation. I'm a white artist from North Carolina, and it feels weird to create work inspired by Japanese creators. Yoshitomo Nara and Takashi Murakami are foundational to Japan's kawaii culture, but at the same time I wonder about the concept of owning traits for characters. Where is the line between appropriation and appreciation? I think that line is in research and giving credit to those who inspire your work. Art that uses elements of Japanese kawaii culture are everywhere. As an artist, Catherine from Catnip creates characters very similar to Japanese cartoons and the marketing of companies like Sanrio. Across sites like Redbubble and Society6, you can find artists taking inanimate objects and giving them big eyes and small but sweet smiles. I love Catherine's art and the joy in her portrayal of all sorts of creatures, but my attraction to her art isn't surprising. As a kid, I checked out books like How to Draw Manga. I grew up loving Yu-Gi-Oh, Pokemon, and the cuteness of Japanese cartoons and merchandise. And even as an adult, I love Pusheen and Gudetama. And with the Animal Crossing update in full swing, Japanese art-inspired cuteness is pervading my screens. Anthropomorphism, giving human characteristics to non-human subjects, is common in the kawaii aesthetic. I've been playing a lot of Cozy Grove, which lets you control a character with big eyes and a little body, and you help anthropomorphic bears. And I anthropomorphized my log and mushrooms in this art piece. Through the process of thinking about the term kawaii, I came across Simon May's book, The Power of Cute. May says that a frequent 
criticism against cute art is that it, quote, imposes human qualities onto non-human things and so heedlessly anthropomorphizes the world. It cannot let anything it touches, nature, an animal, a piece of fruit, be in its otherness. Instead, it is an imperialistic force that brings everything under human sway, compelling non-human things to fit into a human mold and to conform to human needs. End quote. From this standpoint, it feels oppressive to impose our own consciousness on non-human subjects. However, you could imagine this situation from another standpoint. May points out that, quote, the more unlike us others are, the more we must impute to them human feelings and human characteristics, such as vulnerability, pain, and the need for protection in order to unleash the sense of fellow feeling. Anthropomorphizing, to the extent that it extends our circle of concern, therefore makes possible such empathic access to the other. In doing so, it can jump species barriers between humans and the rest of the animal world, and between the living and the inanimate." End quote. Anthropomorphizing the non-human and making it cute can make us care more for that subject. Pictures of cute possums make me care more for the integral role the possum serves in our environment. Anthropomorphizing plants may make us take better care of them in our homes. I think it's vital for artists to consider their conscious and unconscious choices in their artwork. And in my research, I still have not found much on the kawaii aesthetic and cultural appropriation. So I began to research on the idea of artistic appropriation more generally. The Museum of Modern Art defines appropriation in art as, quote, the intentional borrowing, copying, and alteration of pre-existing images, objects, and ideas, end quote. But as James O. Young points out, quote, not all appropriation by artists is cultural appropriation. Almost all artists engage in some sort of appropriation in that they borrow ideas, motifs, plots, technical devices, and so forth from other artists, end quote. Young points out three types of content appropriation that are not cultural appropriation. Number one, style appropriation. Number two, motif appropriation. And number three, subject appropriation. Style appropriation is when an artist appropriates a style of art from another culture. Motif appropriation is when artists are influenced by a culture's art without appropriating style. And subject appropriation is when an artist depicts subjects from a culture different from their own. One might recall Rachel Dolezal's depiction of black subjects in her paintings. But writing even more specifically about cultural appropriation, Young writes the following. Cultural appropriation is not something about which it is easy to generalize. Sometimes cultural appropriation is theft. Some acts of cultural appropriation are clearly wrong because they give rise to works of art that are harmful in other ways. Sometimes the very act of engaging in cultural appropriation can be wrong because it is profoundly offensive. But then other acts of cultural appropriation are morally benign. Some works of art are aesthetic failures precisely because an artist has appropriated content in a clumsy and ineffective manner. Other artists appropriate content and create masterpieces." End quote. Young says that his goal in cultural appropriation and the arts is to show that, quote, there can be no blanket condemnation of cultural appropriation, end quote. Young continues, quote, This is important, I believe, because cultural appropriation is important to the flourishing of the arts in the contemporary world, end quote. I bring all of this information to my channel because as an artist, I am regularly questioning my subject matter, the inspiration I draw from, and the messages that I send with my artwork. And one of my biggest pet peeves for an art channel is when the artist doesn't talk about their own art. So here I am overthinking my art. I've appropriated so many artists and ideas and subjects in my endeavors trying to learn how to draw and paint. And it's fascinating to see conversations evolving around cultural appropriation and the other ways an artist can appropriate. And by the end of this video, I have more questions now than when I started. What are the ethical implications of painting people different than you? Would you then just be limited to self-portraits? 
I love painting other people, noticing the uniqueness in their faces. But is it ethically right to paint someone from another culture? Would I be profiting from their face and their body? These are the types of questions I want to have with artists of various backgrounds and experiences. So here are my questions for folks in the comments. Number one, how do you feel about artists from non-Japanese backgrounds appropriating a kawaii aesthetic? Do you see traits of kawaii art in the art of other cultures? Number two, should white artists use the term kawaii to describe their artwork? And number three, what are you currently questioning about your art and the art that you've been encountering lately? As always, thank you for watching. If you liked the video and want to support the channel, consider subscribing, liking the video, and sharing this with someone who might enjoy it. Have a wonderful day, and I'll see you next time!